Whilst I was sat at my nan's dining table doing a one week hackathon, my team and I were trying to get the EAS SDK working on our app and it was surprisingly easy. So in this video, I can't wait to show you just how powerful this SDK really is. My name is Hakim and I'm a Web3 engineer. My mission is to help you land your dream role in Web3. So let's begin. In front of me here, I have a simple React app that I've made where it is a freelancing platform. So we have a, imagine we have a freelance platform where anyone can sign up to it with their wallet address. And as they sign up to it, they create their own schema. This schema will be a representation of their reputation. The schema name is just the freelancer reputation. The client name will be the client that is attesting to you and your reputation. The value that you've given to the client and whether or not they will recommend you again. So step one will be registering the schema as the freelancer. And then step two will be creating attestations as the client for the freelancer. And finally, we'll show how to revoke previous attestations as the client against the freelancer. So if I head back over here to our VS code, the requirements that you would need are will list on screen now. If you follow along with this repository, which I included in the description below, you will only need two packages to install. So let's have the EAS SDK and ethers. So this would be the latest version of ethers, which is ethers version six. Perfect. So once installed, I want to show you quickly what the code looks like. Um, you will see in the app.tsx, this is where the entire front end is going to be. So I just kept everything in one file. Right now, um, you will only see the register schema. But as you can see in the next part, there is the attestation creation and the re uh, revoking of an attestation. So let's start off with setting up the SDK. So in our config file, you will notice there is a freelance address and the client address. You want to have these defined in your .env. I have left my actual addresses in here. Just replace them with yours. You need two different addresses here. And then back in the config, you uh, I've left in, in the config, I've left in the EAS address, which is for this Apolia network and the schema registry address. So these two are the base contracts that you will be inheriting from when you uh, both create a schema and do any form of attestation logic after that. And then we have a schema constant here, which we pass through when we make an attestation. And again, these schema details are more to give you, the viewer, uh, a better insight as to what's going on with the schema. So let's go over to our hooks. We have a use EAS.ts, or we actually don't need this one. Let me delete this. Let me just uncomment the code and hit save. So in this React hook, we have the EAS SDK initialization and also the schema registry. So they both come from the same package, but as I said before, they're two different smart contracts. So you need to uh, create two separate instances of them, as you can see here. Every time the app is started, we're going to check to see if there's an address currently signed into the uh, application. If not, then we're going to continue here and then we're going to create a new instance of the EAS contracts and then a new instance of the schema registry. We would then connect the user to the application using ethers version six, like here. So we get the provider first, get the signer from the provider, and then we can also set the address from the signer. Once we've done that, we connect the ES, the EAS instance to the signer and also the schema registry to the signer as well. So we can perform read and write operations using the SDK. These, these state variables are then returned back and then we can use them in our app.tsx in here. So let's have const um, schema registry. use EAS. Okay, so let's set up the register schema logic here. 
Now in this uh, function call, we're going to first check to see if the schema registry is undefined. If it is, return out of it. And then we're going to create a transaction constant here, which should be a wait schema registry dot register. And there's three parameters that go in here. There is the schema, which will be from our config. So import from schema. The resolver address. Now the resolver is used to execute additional logic. It's like a hook that you've just seen here in React. It's a hook that executes any logic that you want whenever somebody attests to your schema. So this could be paying the freelancer. It could be um, minting an NFT, literally anything you want. And in the next video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do these things. For now, we're not using a resolver. So we just say undefined and then we say revocable true so we do want this to be revocable if a client isn't happy they can revoke their previous attestation so we can then do const uh, uid equals transaction dot wait need to await this and then we set the schema id to the UID. So this is a logic for registering a schema. Real quick, just to go over the UI. Um, if you're not familiar with React, uh, all we're doing is using state variables to set the schema UID. This just means that whenever we make a change, it will be persisted uh, on any re-renders that happen within this component so we don't lose the data. However, if you refresh the page, you will lose information, which is why I added this comment here that if you do refresh the app at all, uh, all you have to do is just get the UID from uh, EAS scan and then paste it into here. Oh, I'm also gonna console log this in here. So console.log schema UID, something UID. So we're gonna console log the UID, we're gonna copy that to our clipboard and then paste it into here once it's done. So, so I'm now the freelancer signing up to the application Let's hit register and there's an error of course there is uh what if i change so maybe if i change one of these i'll, I'll put like client name uh but like work quality instead but work quality uh work quality Let's change this around. Maybe it's because I've got duplicates somehow. And register schema. Okay, that worked. So you can't have the same schema with the exact same values deployed twice. I think you can actually give them a name, but anyway. So now we're going to register the schema. Hit confirm that it's just pending and that went through successfully. And now you can see because of our React stage, the UI has been updated. So the next step now is to switch to our client wallet and attest to the freelancer's authenticity. Now we want to grab the schema UID here, copy it and paste it into our state variable here. So it persists, hit save. And now I'm going to sign out of this wallet and into the client wallet now. So let's switch to our client, which is just called web free made for me. This can be any other client besides the one that created the schema. I will quickly show you this new schema that we just made. So it's the EAS scan. And with our schema UID, we can paste this in and then find nothing. Oh, because we're on Sepolia scan. <laughs> Make sure you're on Sepolia. EAS Sepolia scan. Cool, paste this in. Now we can see our schema that we just registered now, and this is what the client will attest against. Now let's create the attestation logic. So back in our app.tsx file, I'm going to make a const, and we're going to go with attestation UID first, like before. UState string, and we're going to do a similar thing as before. So we have an attestation UID and a schema UID. These are two very different things. 
and create another constant below this called attestation data and set attestation data use state uh, this would be a type attestation data as we've just seen up there which should be an object containing the freelancer which should be their wallet address whoops freelancer which would be their wallet address which would be an empty string the value of work or actually we need to rename this now to uh, was it quality of work work quality so the change just to work quality which would be a number between 1 and 100 and recommend which is just a boolean so false these are the default values there let's hit save so I'm going to just paste in some logic for the handling of the user inputs. So whenever I use inputs, any values for this attestation data, it's going to just set the values for the name. I mean, the freelancer work quality and recommended. And then below this register schema here, I'm going to add in the uh, create attestation, which would be an asynchronous function. And I'm going to just paste in this code that I've prepared here and talk you through it. So first of all, we need the EAS uh, SDK, not the schema registry this time, to make sure you've got that imported. And we're gonna use something called the schema encoder, which will encode our data into a bytes 32 format. So the smart contract can interpret it, pass through our data into this encode data uh, method here, which does what I just told you. And we need to change this to quality, work quality, and as you can see, as you can see, the there is a name, which is the name, which is a schema field called client name, the value, which will be the current address of the client making the attestation, and the type, which is a string. Now these types are the solidity types. You'll notice uint8, which means a number between 1 and 255, and the uh, recommend, which is a boolean, so a yes or a no value, true or false. After we've encoded this data, we can then create the transaction to attest. This requires the schema UID, which we defined up here. And then the recipient of the attestation is the freelancer. So we are attesting against the freelancer. And then the ex expiration time we don't care about. And the revocable is true because we want because I'm going to show you how to revoke a previous attestation. So maybe the client was happy the first time round and then they noticed something wrong with the quality of work and they revoked that claim. Once you've done, so the result of the transaction is going to be an attestation UID which gets submitted by an event and we want to store this in our attestation UID similar to our schema UID as before and we're going to use that to create, uh, to revoke previous attestations. So let's fill in the UI and comment this code. Cool. So we don't have revoke attestation yet, so we can hide that for now. Hit save. Let's head back. Cool. So let's put in the freelancer's address, which was our first wallet here. So the admin. Uh, this is the value of work, which is of course, a perfect 100. And then would you recommend this freelancer? Yes. Let's hit create attestation. Incompatible param value of work. Okay, so we need to update that somewhere in here. Value of work. Okay, let's change that to work quality. Hit save, change go back again. Create. And hit confirm. Perfect. Now, now let's head over to our EAS scan, hit refresh. We can see an on-chain attestation has been made. Let's take this UID, head back over to our application, and we need to store this in our state variable here. Finally, we're going to revoke an attestation. So I'm going to quickly paste in some code that I prepared, and let's uncomment this code down here so we can revoke head back up and this time we are fetching the attestation UID that we've just made and only 
the owner of that attestation UID can do this, can actually revoke. So we've got this attestation, it returns towards an object. And in the object, we're accessing the schema and the UID of the attestation. Uh, we then await here, but we don't need to do this this time. So let's just hit save, head back. Now I'm gonna revoke. Confirm. Great, so we've revoked our previous claim. Let's look in the EAS scan, hit refresh. This attestation was revoked at 12.39.48 p.m. And if you head back to the uh, schema, so the schema still shows one attestation, but if you go to the actual attestation itself, you can see that it's been revoked, therefore it's deemed invalid. Any questions you have on the Ethereum attestation service or the SDK, please let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to help you. In the next video, I will show you how to whitelist users so not just anyone can make attestations and even send payments on successful attestations. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys soon.